Hi, my name is Emily Gurley, and I'm an infectious disease epidemiologist at the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. And today I'm going to answer all your questions about contact tracing. So let's get started. First question, why is contact tracing important? I would say there are two reasons. The first, first and foremost, is that it's a way for us to help keep each other safe and in the loop about our own exposure to SARS coronavirus 2. So if we tell each other when, uh, we, you know, when we've been exposed, when someone's been exposed, then they can take the proper measures to um, keep from having contact with others that would propagate an outbreak or that where they could transmit to other people. So it's one of the most important we, ways we have um, to prevent transmission outside of vaccines. So that's, that's number one. Number two, from a public health perspective, contact tracing helps us track the epidemiology of this virus. So as you probably all have heard, we have emerging variants of concern that could change the epidemiology, the transmissibility, the severity. And so through contact tracing data, we can, as public health officials, track what's happening with outbreaks and the spread so that we can tailor public health pro programs appropriately. So two main reasons why contact tracing is important. Okay, next, uh, what are some ways employers can use contact tracing? So just to be clear, contact tracing is the remit and responsibility of your local public health department. So if you're going to be doing contact tracing, be sure that you're in, um, in touch with them and collaborating with them because they're going to have to do contact tracing anyway. Um, so it's better if you're linked up and assisting. Um, so I think as an employer, there are a couple of ways that contact tracing is, I guess, used or um, the benefits of assisting contact tracing and facilitating contact tracing within your workplace. I think first it can improve trust among employees and customers if they know that you're really trying to stay on top of things um, and to help keep them safe. So um, it can be used that way. <laughs> um, you can, again, employers are facilitating the contact tracing process. So let's say someone tests positive uh, in your office. Um, if you know that, you can help to identify who may have been exposed so that the public health department can follow up with them. You could even facilitate that, that communication. Um, so you use it to help keep your employees safe. That's the shortest, shortest answer I have. Okay, how should employers talk to their employees about contact tracing? Uh, so that's the, <laughs> the key point there is you should talk to your employees about contact tracing. Um, Think about it this way. Um, if all of us knew exactly what to do to keep from infecting others, um, we could do contact tracing ourselves, right? If you were infected and you knew how contact tracing worked, you could tell all your contacts. You could isolate yourself without any additional information or, or assistance perhaps, and maybe they could quarantine themselves as well. And we could all just do this on our own if everybody knew what to do and had the resources to do so. So um, when you talk to employees about contact tracing, what you're trying to do is help facilitate that, right? Not everybody wants to take on that role. Um, health departments may need to help folks provide resources. You are going to be helping by ensuring folks have the, the ways and means to isolate themselves and quarantine themselves at home when they need to. Um, so you need to be talking with your employees about you know, how they would like to do this. How do they wanna keep each other safe and your clients safe um, from COVID-19? Um, so, I mean, it, in my experience, talk, it, it, this can be a sensitive issue, right? So you want to have lots of conversations, and again, conversations where everyone's able to contribute um, 
to decide how best to go forward uh, and, and what folks feel most comfortable with. Um, you can rely on, again, on your local health department for guidelines on, on best practices and, and what they're recommending locally based on, on the local state of, of the pandemic where you are. Okay, how can we be sure that the contact tracing will not use our personal data for other things? So I assume, well, I, I can't assume here. So I'll answer this question in two ways. One, um, again, the public health, your local public health department is the one that's ultimately responsible for contact tracing. And so they're going to be the ones receiving information about contact, tra contact tracing information um, you know, for public health purposes, they have the mandate for, for contact tracing. Um, how can you be sure that the public health department isn't going to use the data for other things? Well, um, I don't think we've seen any examples of that. That would be a severe breach of their duties as public health departments and, and offices. Um, I haven't heard of any, any issues of that kind in the pandemic. Um, in terms of your employer, they can share information with public health that can help, you know, the public health department do their job. So let's say, you know, schools are a great example where contact tracing happens. Um, sometimes a student may not be able to recall all of the students that they have contact with during the day, for example but the school has a, a class list and they're able to quickly identify uh, whoever may have been exposed, uh, let's say, you know, if there were a case in a school. So in, in that, those situations, the school is helping to facilitate contact tracing with the health department. Um, again, I, I think it's important that employers and employees have discussions so that everybody knows that, so that there's transparency about what can and can't be shared. I know in many workplaces, the HR department that typically handles other sensitive information um, is, the, is, is on point for, for discussions with the health department of, uh, about um, cases and contact tracing. So there are different models and options out there that, that work. And if you're concerned about um, how information might be shared within your organization or company, I suggest you reach out to to your leadership to ask them what they're doing to to safeguard your health and also your information. OK, what kind of information is contact tracing looking for? So the goal of contact tracing, well, let's let's think about the steps. So the first step is identifying someone who has SARS coronavirus, too. So that happens through surveillance. Some workplaces have surveillance um, and are facilitating um, testing for employees. Some don't. Sometimes, um, you know, a case may come to public health, come to the attention of public health, and because of where they work, public health will reach out to that employer or workplace. Some people may disclose their own status to their employer because, well, maybe they need time off uh, while they're infectious and they may disclose who their contacts um, were to their employer and, and to public health. So, um, so the goal of, of contact tracing is to find those folks and then ask them or find out however they can uh, who they had contact with. So that can happen through an interview with the case or as I gave in the, you know, the school example, there can be rosters of who worked together with that person while they were infectious. Those people may want to know that they've been exposed. Um, so it's really just about trying to identify who the contacts were so that they can be notified of their exposure. And again, that's a, a common courtesy so that someone can be sure that they themselves don't go on to infect someone else. Importantly, just to add, um, contact tracing never discloses the name of the case. So if you identify contacts of a case, you notify them that they've been exposed, but they are never told who the case patient is. And that's how public health, you know, does their best to ensure 
um, that the the privacy of the case is is maintained. Okay, do you think smartphone-based tools will improve contact tracing? I think it depends. Um, I think it, they can be a useful tool uh, depending on the setting. Um, so what uh, smartphone-based applications do is they can sort of measure the distance between you and someone else. Um, and they can send a notification to you if you've been, it's usually within six feet of, of someone else for uh, 15 minutes or more is the standard uh, definition. Um, so if you've been within that radius of that person and they enter a code into their phone that says that they have been diagnosed with COVID, then you get a notification that you were exposed. Um, this is, how most of those systems have been working uh, in, in states that I know about that are using them. Um, if, the, if the majority of people have this app on their phone, it can be useful. Um, the caveats to that kind of system are that people have to enter their uh, test results. The case has to enter their test results into their phone in a timely way, um, which may or may not occur. Um, the you know contacts, um, we, if you get a notification that you've been exposed, you need to call the health department um, or notify someone if, if you need assistance in quarantining, um, which may or may not happen. So there can be some gaps there. Um, but you know, depending on the setting, if it's hard to keep track of who does have contact with whom and you think that this could augment your contact tracing program, um, you know, we, we have to use all the tools available to us to do the best job we can. So you could consider it. Um, one major limitation, though, uh, is that those data are never shared with the public health department. They are not kept. It's a, typically, a, you know, an, an encrypted system where two phones just log that they've had contact with each other. So public health still has to do the work of trying to not, you know, to track down those contacts if they don't self-report as contacts. Um, so it doesn't always save a lot of time on that side. Um, there are some other limitations in the technology itself. Um, so for example, if I'm in an office and someone is in an office right next door to me and the walls aren't terribly thick, our phones could log that you know, the, that they are very close to each other for a long period of time, even though we haven't been in the same room. Um, so there are some limitations. So you really have to consider the context where you're thinking of using them. Next question. What are the biggest challenges in contact tracing from a public health perspective? Ah, uh, <laughs> it's hard to pick uh, the biggest challenge. I would say that um, in this pandemic, uh, a major challenge has been um, gaining people's trust. There's been a lot of uh, mistrust, misunderstanding about what contact tracing is. Um, and, and therefore, you know, uh, uh, unwillingness um, or disinterest in participating. And ultimately, the program is only as good as um, the participation in that program. Um, I think the other major limitation of contact tracing is that it's a huge ask. It's a really big ask of someone to isolate themselves or to self quarantine, um, you know, if they're infectious or they could become infectious if they've been exposed. And in the United States, many people aren't able to isolate or self-quarantine themselves well. Many of them may not be able to ask off time from work, for example, um, or may not feel comfortable at, you know, asking for that time, even if they're able. Um, many folks may not have a place to go to effectively quarantine or isolate themselves to be away from others um, that may not be possible in their home. So, um, even when folks are convinced of the need for contact tracing, the gaps in their ability to isolate and quarantine 
mean that contact tracing is much less effective than it could otherwise be. And in fact, we know that a lot of transmission happens within households. You're, you're, you're likely to be infected um, if someone you live with um, is infected simply because you know, isolation and quarantine are, are difficult. So, um, so I would mention those. Uh, one more, if I can get it in, is that um, the most important part of contact tracing, and this may sound counterintuitive because contact tracing has the word contact in it, but the most important part of contact tracing is finding cases as quickly as possible. So if you feel at all, you know, under the weather, uh, go ahead and get that test right away because um, the sooner we find cases, then the quicker we can be in controlling onward spread. So finding cases is the most important. How should employers respond to employees or customers who refuse to provide their information? Um, so I, in terms of customers, I think businesses have um, some discretion in what they uh, require from customers or clients in terms of information uh, to keep other patrons safe as well as their staff. Um, so, and, and there may, you know, you have to also check with your local public health department. I mean, there may be standards in place locally um, that you need to adhere to. Uh, in terms of employees, um, again, I, there are two ways that, um, con so contact tracing, again, it's the responsibility of the local public health department, but many employers, um, are asked by the public health department to assist in identifying contacts for the good of public health and their employees. Um, and many employees, um, have an expectation that our, their employers are going to try to keep them safe and let them know if they've been exposed. Um, so you have to set your own community guidelines there. Um, of course, anyone who's interviewed, um, who's asked to disclose their contacts can refuse to do that. And I think, you know, in many uh, jurisdictions that, ha that can happen. Um, so really building trust as much as you can uh, so that people understand how the information is going to be used and why it's important, um, you know, is good to do before someone gets a call uh, from a contact tracer. Also, just to note, businesses often have some information about who might be a contact, even without an interview. And and um, if if they can help the public health department with that information, such as like a class roster, for example, that's just an example. Um, then, then, then they can do that as well. And, and then it's not on the person to, to recall, which is also helpful. Are public health systems coordinating on contact tracing across states? So the short answer is yes. Um, so if, uh, if, uh, a case is identified and they've recently traveled or I live in Baltimore, right? So there are cases uh, that may be identified here that live in Virginia or Washington DC and vice versa. Um, so um, the public health departments will let each other know if there are cases or contacts that were identified in one state or jurisdiction that need to be followed up by another. So this can cross state lines, certainly, uh, county lines, et cetera. Will there be a point at which we don't need to continue contact tracing? If so, when would that be? Well, that would really be nice, wouldn't it? Um, contact tracing um, is important for us right now because, again, we have variants of concern. Um, we're still learning about um, transmission in the age of vaccination. <laughs> so vaccines are fantastic. Um, well, we talked about you know, how employers might be able to use uh, contact tracing. Um, I'll just put another plug in that it can be used as a carrot for 
helping convince people, you know, about the benefits of vaccination. So if you're vaccinated and you're a contact, you don't have to quarantine. You should still be notified because if you become sick, you know, you'll need to get tested and, and make sure that, that you're not infectious, but you don't have to quarantine. And that is a tremendous reduction in the burden of quarantine, um, which is good for the employer and certainly for the employees. So vaccines can be, you know, can be used as, 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 or that not that the, the fact that you don't have to quarantine can be used as a carrot to help promote vaccine and vaccination, which is, is good for all the communities. Um, I've forgotten the question. <laughs> Can you put it back up for me? No? Oh yeah, great. So the point at which we don't need contact tracing anymore is if we don't have any more cases. I mean, that's the short answer. Um, I don't think that's ever going to be true. Um, I, my best guess is that if we continue to have widespread vaccination coverage, um, it continues to improve. We're really going to see very few COVID cases if we're able to do those things, which would be fantastic um, and a goal we should all be aiming towards. But the idea that we're going to live in a world where there's no more COVID is unrealistic, um, in my opinion. I, uh, the we have we've we've managed to completely eradicate only one disease ever. So I don't think that COVID is going to be that special. Um, and just just to note that you know contact tracing happens every day and happened every day all around the country for other diseases like HIV and TB, measles. Um, so contact tracing has always been here and it will continue to be here. Um, uh, you know, probably also for COVID. And again, the reason to keep doing it is just to be sure that we're understanding any changes in the epidemiology that would be a greater cause for concern, including variants um, that are able to get around our immune responses from vaccination that cause more severe disease that are more transmissible um, we need to still track this virus because our history and experience with it is still very new. Um, it may seem like it's been here forever. We certainly have a lot of experience with it, um, but, but we're going to need to monitor it going forward. Um, at least, <laughs> at least for, for the foreseeable future. Okay, next question. How would you rate how well we are doing on contact tracing COVID in the US? What could we be doing better? Um, I think right now in the US, we have a, a lot of effort going towards vaccination, which is appropriate. Vaccines are, are uh, a way more effective public health tool than contact tracing. Um, in terms of preventing disease and transmission. Um, but, um, sorry, I, I, I must be getting tired. Can you put the question back up? Yeah. Um, but I, I think, um, let's see how well. So right now, because of the vaccines, um, we have fewer cases than we've had in a long time. And that's good for contact tracing programs because that means um, that they're able to follow up with cases in a more timely way, um, that they're able to be more thorough, hopefully. Um, and, and that improves the overall effectiveness of contact tracing. So in some ways it's, you know, sometimes lower case numbers mean that contact tracing works even better, which is great. That's that's good for all of us. What could we be doing better? I, I would go back to the same things uh, that I mentioned that, that really drive how effective contact tracing is. So the first is complete identification of cases as quickly as possible. 
So improving surveillance, making sure we still have great surveillance with accessible testing, um, you know, rapid tests that you can administer quickly is a great example of, of how we might uh, improve uh, surveillance and testing. Um, that coupled with um, ensuring that everybody who needs to isolate and quarantine has a safe place to do so and is able to, to make that happen. The more resources we can provide to people uh, who, who may have difficulties doing that, the better off we're all going to be because it's going to drive down transmission even lower in our communities. What's the most effective way to contact trace? Are there best practices you can share? Um, so we have a course on contact tracing. It's freely available on Coursera. It's called uh, COVID-19 Contact Tracing, um, which walks through the process of contact tracing if you're interested and provides some tips about how you can talk to people, um, and, and really what you're looking for to identify cases. Um, there's some great videos that, that help you understand how to talk to, to folks about exposure. Um, but it really depends, you know, it depends on your context and the type of relationship that you have uh, with your customers and with your employees. Um, one of the advantages of having employers involved in contact tracing is that there's often some baseline level of trust, um, of improved communication. You know, most people don't talk to the public health department that often, but they frequently talk with their employer. So you can play a, a key role in making sure people understand what's happening locally, what's happening with your program uh, and everything uh, that you're doing. And at the same time, you can identify with all everyone in your community, in your workplace, again, how are you gonna keep each other safe? How are you gonna identify contacts? What are you doing in the workplace to limit contacts just in case someone does become infected? Um, those are all important conversations to have. And the best practice is, is, is really doing the best you can knowing your context. Contact tracing is best when it's tailored to the context in which it occurs. So. Only you all know your, your contact, you know, you know your contacts better than anyone else. What are you optimistic about in the next phase of the pandemic? I think, uh, you know, I, I think we were all really surprised at how well the vaccines that we developed work. Um, I don't even think we we dreamt that the vaccines we're using here would work this well. And I'm really, really hopeful that the more, um, you know, I know some folks are still on the fence about whether or not to be vaccinated. And I hope that as more and more people see how well they work, um, that they'll also, you know, agree to be vaccinated because that that's really the best tool that we have. Um, I'm also hopeful that once we as a country uh, are feeling more secure and how things are going here, we can help others globally. <laughs> you know, we're gonna, we're, if there's transmission happening anywhere, our, you know, we are connected to every other country in the world. So we need to then start helping each other in a global perspective to try to drive numbers down. Um, the virus will, continue to evolve and wherever it's evolving, the threat of novel variants that are more severe and more transmiss transmissible, um, that threat's going to exist. So it's in our best interest to do what we can, not just here in the United States, but also globally. And I'm, I'm hopeful that we're gonna see even more of that happening now. All right, well, thank you so much for your questions. I hope it was useful. If, um, if you have additional questions, you can feel free to reach out to me on Twitter at emilygurley3 and wish you all the best.